Now I'm going to record what we're going to do now, having built up this model with age and uh, the ability to consider people coming into the population through births and people dying, right, from heart disease or other causes. We could spend time coloring them and you'd get different colors, people with heart disease without or, you know, smokers or former smokers or what have you. That, that actually could be quite insightful in the graph of delight, but we're not going to go that. I'll leave that as a as a delightful home exercise. But let's do something here that we promised. Let's not fall short of that. We're going to add, divide up people into different initial states when it comes to their, their smoking status, if I may. May we do this? Okay. Okay, so... What we're going to do is, is go through a couple stages, okay? The first thing we're going to do um, is sort of a necessity. Uh, it, it, it ends up being useful for other reasons often. Oh, yeah, thanks. We're going to add in a option list. How did I do this? We're going to right click on this model. I'm sorry, I'm gonna call this version 14 just because I posted 13, right? But if I had more presence of mind, I would have posted, well, no, it, it's time for enough and I'm gonna call this 14. Okay, so we're gonna have to right click here and do option list. Mm -hmm. And the option list will be called smoking status option list. And it's going to have three values in it. So an option list names a bunch of things. Some people may have heard of enums, sort of convenient names for values. That's what this is. So if you go to this option list and you double click here, we're going to add three values. Never smoker smoking status by the way i'm naming them this so they don't clash with the name of the states current smoker smoking status because remember the states are called number smoker current smoker former smoker former smoker smoking status are we okay with that be okay with that so each of these will label so it so happens people are going to be in you know, a stat status that they can start in one of these. Okay, so that's step one. Add an option list that encodes the possible states into which you divide them. Two, two, we are going to add a custom distribution object, which I have been, uh, oh, sorry, that's from the palette. I have been yearning to show you. It's, it's, it's actually pretty neat. Go to the agent palette, drag in a custom distribution object. And this is going to be sm initial smoking status distribution. It's going to be a discrete distribution over op the smoking status option list. So in, uh, um, so in other words, we'll be drawing values randomly from those three values we just had, never smoker, current smoker, former smoker, okay? Notice if you said continuous here, it wouldn't give you that choice. And those are discrete values, right? Current, former, never, smoking status. Okay, now it's going to ask, well, what proportion? You know, like what fraction of the time would I draw one versus the other? I'm going to say, you know, we could plan this a lot more. We could run the model to equilibrium and see, get use empirical values in the population. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say point. 
two in the model are never smokers. Point four are current, and point four are plumber. Of course, that's very different from our society, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to reflect the fact that right now in the model, actually, most people start smoking, unfortunately. Okay. Now, by the way, these don't have to total up to one, but in this case, I, I kind of like them too. I mean, sensible, right? Um, to think of them as probabilities. So this is a probability mass function. You have a 20% chance. You When you draw from this custom distribution, the initial smoking status distribution, you have a 20% chance getting it to be a never smoker, 40% for current, 40% for former. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. We're almost done. We, we just have a little bit more work to do over here. So in order to divide people up like this, so that was step two. First was adding the option list. Second was adding the custom distribution based on the option list. The third is to wire up this smoking status so that it uses those values to route you to the right way. And actually there's a fourth step, which is to, in the population, feed that value in to your parameter. Okay, so actually there's two stage, two steps here. The first is to drag in a two sub steps, a parameter that's called initial smoking status. Okay, initial smoking status. And what sort of type of value is it gonna be? Smoking status option list. I just added a parameter to person that it's gonna encode in what state they start as a, in terms of smoking. We could have added another parameter, what heart disease state they start. And that parameter we've drawn from that option list, one of those three values. Now, you might think, we can use that to encode their immigration status, right? Are they a Canadian citizen? Are they a, a landed immigrant? Are they someone here on a visa, right? Student visa or work visa. Um, you could use it to encode, you know, uh, their uh, self-identified gender. You could use it to identify their sex of birth. Um, and you'd be exactly right. It's a very versatile construct. And that's why I'm teaching it to you. Okay. But we have work to do to, to implement it here. So what will its default value? We'll say never smoker smoking status. Mm -hmm. Make sure it builds and is a happy camper. Oh, 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 look at that. Okay, this is really exciting. This is really exciting. Okay. Oh, oh, you know what? It's because this thing is disconnected. It's it's just, it got all confused. That's good for you to see. Um, not, well, okay. So some of those were from that, indeed. Okay, this is really exciting. Okay, add, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So now it's telling me, Okay, wait a minute, you have a parameter here. You have to tell us when a baby is born, what its smoking status is. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell me, what's its smoking status of a baby when it's born? Never a smoker. So we're gonna pass it in. How do you know where to pass this in? Well, it's quite simple. You do add population and it shows you birth time. You have to give an initial smoking status. Okay, there's our birth time, and their initial smoking status will be never smoker smoking status. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, are we okay with that? That's in the births. And now it's actually a happy camper. Here we go. It's actually a happy camper, but we got to fix up that state chart. We got to implement that that's their actual initial one. Right now it says initial, but initial, but it's not actually realized. It's not actualized. It's not operationalized in the same way we talked about for other things. So now we're going to drag this up and it's going to be in a transient state. We're going to drag something to a to the state chart 
that you need to see and that I would feel guilty if you left without having seen it. And I'm not referring, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, to the graph of delight. Okay? So, so we have to drag a, a branch there. Are we okay with that? Okay. Maybe I should do TikTok videos. <laughs> I'll say like, do you want to see it? <laughs> want to see the graph of delight? I'll show you a graph of delight. <laughs> That's right. Okay, someone will have to show me like what sort of thing is on TikTok. <laughs> Are there a lot of academic lectures on there? Or? There is. Yeah. yeah, there is. Okay, well, okay. Now you're starting to get me interested. Okay. You have a one million fans, so then maybe. Uh huh. Like, like, like they could follow me on category theory or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So, ladies and gentlemen, we're bending this, this um, to our will, even as I muse about my coming pain. Um, <laughs> And uh, here we go. Okay. So, oh, hey, hey, get over here. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. There we go. And, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a TikTok with John Biases. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've just gone and we've added a distribution mechanism, people, but it's not yet fully formed. What we've done is we've added a branch, and then it branches to three separate states. There's one option to go to never smoker, one to current, and one to former. But it's all confused right now because all three of them are default. That's why they're dotted lines. A branch's job in life is to determine a condition and route one's accordingly okay so we're going to set a default one that will be this one going to never smoker and the alternatives will be conditional ones conditional on a certain thing being true and you're going to tell me i'm going to call this conditional one initially initially current smoker and how will I know if they're initially a current smoker how will I know yes the initial smoking state equals what initial smoking status double equals we're testing if it's equals we're not setting it we're not saying do it we're not setting it. We're testing, is it equal? Is it equal to what? Under what condition will be going to current smoker? If it's equal to what? The initial smoking status is okay. current smoker smoking status. Now you may say, why not just current smoker? Because this is encoding values from this option list and the option list in the option list it's called current smoker smoking set. This holds one of these three values. It's going to tell us where to go. And we're going to go where it tells us. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. There we go. Are we okay with that? Similarly, what is it going to bring it to the former smoker state? Riddle me that. Former smoker smoking status. Okay. And that is going to be also not, it's going to be conditional. Sorry. It's got to be conditional, and that has to be in the condition, not the action. That ain't no action. I'll tell you that. If this is the condition. Okay, so this is initially current smoker, 
this is going to be initially initially former smoker former smoker and the default will be they're never a smoker okay so this parameter is going to tell us where to go initially does that make sense to you Okay, we're almost done with this. We stand once again, ladies and gentlemen. Nay, we sit once again on the cusp of greatness. Okay, are you ready? Hearing no objections. This is routing us to the right places, but we have to set this value. Where is this value set? Well, the truth is we already saw one place where it's set. Where was that? where we knew were certitude that they start as never smokers. And where was that? Where was it? Default. Well, there was a default, but there was, there was a place we set it. In the... Population. Well, okay, we're, we got to get to that. We haven't actually done that in our job year. But we, we set it one place where we knew was certitude that... If someone comes into the population via that route, they start as a never smoker. Burr, that's where we set this. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but here's births and they start as a never smoker. Do you remember that? Okay. So what we want to do is we need to set it the other route by which they could be created. Where is that? So the births are for them coming into the population. There's one other route by which agents get into the population. And what is it? It's not immigration. We don't have immigration. What's the other way? The model could start with them in the population. Where is that? Where is that route of entry? It's in a place that's so familiar to you. It begins with P, population. Thank you. Thank you. Population. Okay, so we have to set their initial smoking status. Okay, where are we gonna, where are we gonna, how are we gonna figure out what fraction of people start never a smoker or current smoker? How are we gonna figure that out? We, you, we already set it up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's waiting for us. It's just waiting to be used. Initial smoking status distribution. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the job is complete. Happiness reigns. Delight abounds. And joy is upon us. Are you ready to see it? Are you ready to be delighted? Hearing no objections, I will run this model now. May I? Or may I not? Okay. Okay. Okay, so tell me, how similar does this look to what we saw before? What's going on here? Tell me what's going on. What's the x-axis in the graph of delight? X-axis is what? Age. What's the y-axis? Good. So... Who are these folks kind of coming in, coming in here with as never smokers? What's that? So they're they're coming in there. I, I mean, some people start as never smokers, right? But they start at age zero, right? Like this is where births are occurring, and as they age, some of them stay never smokers. But often those will start to smoke, like this one right here at like age 20, 24 or something. And they'll start to project up. You notice that that initial set had kind of a different distribution than what's induced now. And that reflects the fact often the model's natural dynamics do not exactly match the initial state. And that can be a problem or it can just be a reality of a disequilibrium situation historically. 
But here we go. People living longer and smoking. and But a grim number start smoking even in their 50s or what have you, right? Um, now, by the way, this induces changes in the count of quits or the the cumulative time smoked, you may, may notice. Um, it induces changes in these graphs. Do you see that? Why is the number of smoker, current former smokers and current smokers no longer going up and then down over time? Why, why is it continuing to rise? Because what? Because now we have people coming into the population over time. We have not only deaths, not just one cohort being fallen, but births. For every fall, there is a spring. Is it not? Indeed. Okay, so so now this has induced rather different dynamics. And I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I will rest from this particular model. And this thing, which is yearning to be born, I'm going to add, with your leave, one more custom distribution. I need a TA. No. <laughs> okay, TAs, sector two, front row. They muster. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to add one more thing. Two main. I'm going to add a ladies and gentlemen, a custom distribution. And this will be age of oh, it's tempting. It's tempting. I can make it a hazard rate that's age dependent. I think I'll do it that way, Wade. An age dependent hazard rather than an age of initiated. By age dependent hazard, it's not certain that they'll have to go. An age of initiation, I'd have to give it a high tail way off there. It's kind of awkward. Okay, um, uh, so this will be uh, initiation hazard by age. It's job in life is to give their probability per year of starting to smoke by age. Um, and we're going to give for ranges from zero to, to 10, It'll be zero probability per year um, of them starting to smoke from 10 to 18. That's not some young smokers, but it, there are some like that 10 to 14, I'll give it 0. 0.001. Fine. The typical starting age is smoking like 13 and 14 years old. Oh, okay, is it? Yeah. Like okay. People start really young. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, but I'll change that back to this and I'll make it. Thank you. Thank you for, for letting me know. Yeah. You know, I, I was shocked to see some as early as like 10 years old and so on. Um, okay. And then from 18, to 24.005. Um, these are per year, these are hazard per year. Oh, this is a distribution. No, I want a table function. I'm sorry. I was originally going to do, I'm sorry, I screwed up. I was originally going to do this as a distribution of the age at which they smart start, but I thought it through and thought, oh, that's actually messy. Don't, don't do it that way. And then I um, then I changed plans to make it a hazard rate by age. In that case, it needs to be a different thing, which you also haven't seen, 
but which will flesh out your understanding, which is a table function. So a table function, so it's from the agent palette table function, drag it in initial. So this is an initiation hazard by age and there's the table data. So, so here we go again, zero to 10, um, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, but it, it smooths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at zero, it's zero. At 10, it's zero. Um, maybe I'll say at, at nine, uh, at nine, it's zero. Um, so it's flat there. And then by age 15 or yeah, say 15, it's 0 0.01 per year. And then by age 18, it's 0 0.02. And then uh, by age 24, it's back down to 0 0.005. And then above 24 to age 100, it's zero. Um, and I'm going to make it to age 1,000 it's zero because <laughs> I don't want it to blow up. Out of range, we'll use the nearest. So if it's, well, okay, I should have made it H 100 at zero. If it's more than 100, it will use zero. Okay, so check it out. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. I don't like it. It's like 24, it's 0 0.05. And then it, it decreases. I'll make it by 20, 20, 20. Uh, by 30, it's basically infinitesimal. Um, uh, I'll make it. I'll make it zero, um, and then 100. It's it's zero. Okay, something like that. So it goes up in in the teen years, and so this is nine. This is by 15. This is 18. A, a peak age or something like that. Um, you could you could fault that, but um, I'm going to use that for now. It's going to look up their age, and now we're going to put it into place. Now, instead of there being a fixed initiation rate, what will it be? What will it be? Yeah, yeah. And instead, we're going to change initiation rate. <laughs> We're going to keep it, but we're going to call it something different. We're going to call it initiation rate, um, initiation rate coefficient. So we can we can assume lower or assume higher in some linear way. It's going to start with a value of one. So this is going to allow us to bump it up or bump it down by an intervention. And we're almost done. Sorry, we, we just are going to have this coefficient. So we can have initiation, we can have interventions, and now it's going to be initiation rate rate coefficient, beautiful times. What are we going to look up? We're going to look up initiation hazard by age. And what does it need to do its job? It needs their what? Age. How do we get their age of a given person? We call what? Current age. I'm going to put it up on the big screen. Here we go. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. And let me build it. Let me build it. Here we go. Oh, initiation. Oh, it's in. Sorry. Where's initiation by age? Where does that live in the model? Where does it live? Main. It lives in main. We have to say main dot that. So, sorry. I... I, I did not properly do that. Hey, get back there. I'll, I'll put it up on the big screen. Don't worry. Let's make sure it builds. It's a happy camper. Mine's a happy camper, and you, yours can be a happy camper, too. There we go. Okay, TAs. Who needs TA help? Who needs TA help? The TAs are possessed by energy outstripping that of the instructor. 
their useful vigor. Adds great, great energies to their exertions and they stand ready to help. Okay. Okay, so this is their, now they'll have a certain chance per year of initiating according to their current age. Now, the truth is we have to be a bit careful and this is, this is one of these ugly facts of life. <laughs> Wade knows what I'm talking about. Wade knows what I'm talking about. Sorry, folks, it's not gonna automatically recalculate that. You gotta kind of prompt it to recalculate it. So we're gonna draw a, a arrow out of this state back into it. It's gonna occur every year. It's gonna go out of the state and come back in and its job in life will be to recalculate this thing because it's when you come into this, this is calculated. There's other ways to do it, but this will do the trick. And by the way, if you're wondering, those, the up blank, wait, um, if you're wondering how is that different than a transition inside the state, like to transmit infection, it is different. Believe it or not, any logic treats a self transition differently if it comes out of the state and back in versus in. This one actually re enters the state. The one inside the state never leaves it. It just invokes something. Um, this one, it matters because we want it to recalculate this hazard once a year, at least once a year. Okay, sorry. And if you have trouble bending that to your will, take it from an old man. I think some of the young people, young and limber, will probably be able to do it through other means. But I'm going to go there, drag it. I'm going to double click on it at a point of my choosing. And I'm going to bend it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll double it. I'll, I'll bend it twice. There we are. Okay. You have to double click on it to bend it your will, and this will be every year. Time is rushing on. We've covered much ground, but we still have to finish up. So we now have this age-based initiation. How do you think this will affect that graph of delight? Who needs a bit more time? Should we take a bit more time here? Who needs TA help? That, that what? The loopy transition. Yeah. Oh, I, I call it a self trans, uh, an external self transition, but um, that's just my informal name for it. There's there are internal ones that we use all the time for communicating, like infection, but those are different. The that one never leaves. The internal one never leaves the state. This one does and comes back in. And it's just to force this. I mean, really, it's a hack. It's what computer programmers call a kludge sometimes. It just sort of forces it to recalculate it. And I, I, I frankly detest it. I find it quite abhorrent, but I'm a pragmatist at heart and I perhaps to a fault. So even though it doesn't we can specify a written action in the action text box, it'll still do that reason. Correct, yeah, precisely, even though there's Nothing. It, it will come back in and that will recalculate all the outgoing ones. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So here's the graph of delight. Do you see any difference from before? Yeah, the never smokers are mighty in form and great in number to abuse Shelley. Um, uh, who are these folks heading upwards? These are some residual ones from the starting time who you could see their distribution was not, you know, very effective. They were over time and they all started at zero. Who are these folks here? These are folks who started smoking, right? And and some tried to quit, but they resumed. And so these are never smokers. Mighty in form and great in number. And Here's two of deaths from heart disease, right? Here's annual heart disease incidence. 
years cumulative time smoked, but a histogram of it. What is this saying about their cumulative time smoked? It's very zero heavy, isn't it? But take a look at this. Do you see something disconcerting here? May I paste this in to a graph and you can see it maybe more clearly? You have to look beyond the superficial. You notice there's some people pretty far out here on the curve. It's just, it's very zero heavy. 95% of people are not actually smoking. <laughs> we gave uh, initiation hazard over age, which implied very many people never start smoking. But those who do can smoke for long periods of time. Um, and here's with heart disease. Heart disease burden is much lower than before. Um, here's never smokers, current smokers, and former smokers. And all this, of course, can be run with our sensitivity analysis, right? We defined it before. We can run this. This this uh, stochastic sensitivity analysis, and here you go. That's the number of current smokers over the 100 years. What's going on there? I can read this graph with some clarity about why it's that shape, and I'd ask you if you could. Is cumulative deaths from heart disease. Why is this this kind of U shape? Can anyone help help tease that out? I, I have a very strong hypothesis why it's this U shape. Why? Well, in my view, it's 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 is our, is our death rate too low? Well, here, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so let's let's check out the population. Do you remember what the population's was in the model at the start time? Or was there 100? 100. Yes, yeah, so the population is growing. That's what's pulling it up. So that's the question I asked. Make sure we have a balanced group of death rates. You, you got it. It's 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 a big population. So you, you put your finger on it exactly um, for one part of that curve. Um, the other part is initial conditions, I think. So So let's run this thing out at full tilt through this virtual mode down here. Ba bing, ba boom. And by the end of the simulation, the population is 1,670. Yeah. So, so that initial number of that, that initial population is a, is a, you know, tiny fraction um, of the, well, it's not the right way to put it. It's far, far smaller than the eventual population. So if you're drawing out a count of current smokers, not prevalence, but a count, not the fraction population that's a current smoker, but the count of them, it stands to reason that the, the further you go out, the, the, the bigger this is. Why is it higher here early on? Why is the number of current smokers actually quite high? Because by assumption, our initial distribution of smokers, you know, they basically 80% of the population is current smokers and smoking now or former smokers and sue to smoke again, right? And and so that's actually quite a large number. Um, that, that initial population dies off tragically, et cetera. Um, and, and then there's a period of, of lower numbers, absolute numbers. But then the population size is growing and growing and growing, and the absolute numbers start to go up again. This would be a much clearer graph if we graph the fraction that are that are current smokers. That would that would give us different insights, right? We I think we would find that it's falling and stabilizing over time. But that's all we have time for with this, ladies and gentlemen. But we've come a long way, an awful long way, actually, uh, with this. And I think I will post this. Um, what did we do in a broad sweep? Well, um, we put into place 
a set of, of different mechanisms for sensitivity analysis. We, we, we saw how to graph out many, many runs in the model to give us much greater confidence about what the real regularities are out of this model um, that aren't the result of mere flukes and chance, right? We did see that, you know, it's good to think through what metrics, what outcomes do you want to drag out? Um, in retrospect, probably, you know, uh, drawing out the fractional prevalence would be even better. Um, but beyond that, we introduced aging into the model. We introduced a manner of of introducing births into the population and specifying babies' characteristics along with that. We introduced mechanisms to encode in what state of a state chart, particular state of that state chart to begin. And we saw that option lists were useful for encoding categorical values, values where there's a couple discrete possibilities each given a name, what we might call nominal data. And we saw a distribution over those. That was quite handy. And then we introduced a table function that, that we could use to say by someone's age, what's their hazard rate? And we saw this frankly twisted way of getting that to, to recalculate. That but what it lacks in aesthetics and intellectual satisfaction, it does make up for in pragmatism. And all of that could be used together with this sensitivity analysis to run the model many times over. Really, what I just showed you are things that are used incredibly widely. They're incredibly general. The particular mode of application may not be you know, the exact area you want to apply them. But virtually, I can't think of anything I didn't show that isn't really useful, whatever area you're going to apply this. And so I feel that whilst it took time, while it required attention, while it may have vexed you at times, I believe the journey has been worth it. I believe the climb has afforded us great benefits. And I believe that we have encountered, even there, matters of some delight. Okay, so I close that lecture on other, well, okay. <laughs> One more thing I gotta show, because it's so trivial. Take your stochastic sensitivity analysis. Take, take that and copy it. So right click on it and copy it, right click on the model as a whole and paste it. And we're going to say, birth rate sensitivity analysis. And guess what? Is this gonna be varied only by stochastics? No, it's gonna be varied by as we change birth rate. So here we're going to do varied in range and we're going to modify birth rate to go between a range between 0 0.01. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ah, get me out of there, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Okay, what do we do? Um, Okay, what what's the heart disease mortality rate? What is this? What? Tell me what that is. What if was you it? you delete everything, it'll replace both values. You mean like this and go back? No, it's okay. I don't know, like, click into the place where you put zero. Okay, click in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just remove all the characters. Okay, but I. I and then click out. Oh, sweet. Good man, man. Um, I tell you, the world needs more waves, a lot more of them. 
Okay, birth rate goes from 0 0.05 to 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.005 to 0 0.05. Now, left on its, and, and what's the step? It's 0 0.005. So it's going to go in increments. The first will be 0 0.005. The second will be what? Oh, blank with 0 0.01. The next will be 0 0.0. 0 0.015, it'll be incrementing it by this. Starts at this value, adds successfully until it gets to this value. And for each of them, we're gonna run it 10 times. We're gonna use replications with a fixed number of replications of 10. Okay, now we've rendered the fruits of our labors in even the, the model with all its additions that we just added, we just are going to reproduce it. So here we go. And, and there we go. And we're getting summarized over that entire range, the sort of variability. So this no longer summarizes it for the same set of parameters. It's across the different parameters. Generally speaking, though, you'd want to make like a scatter plot where you have the birth rate on the x-axis and the the outcome on the y-axis and and see how it tracked. Um, I got to do it. Sorry. I got to do it. Sorry. Um, okay. This experiment, you just got to see it. Sorry. It, I'm going to have to give you the calibration video, but we're going to get it done. And my students have to see this. Okay. Okay. So open up the birth rate sensitivity analysis. Birth rate sensitivity analysis is this specific one. For a sensitivity analysis where you're varying a parameter, the, the, one of the best things you can do, ask Marvy, is create in the experiment a plot. A plot. Okay? And this is this plot is going to be it's an XY plot. It's a scatter plot. It's going to be birth rate versus cumulative heart disease mortality scatter plot. What it lacks in brevity, it makes up for in clarity. Birth rate versus cumulative heart disease mortality. You could call it deaths if you want it scatter plot. It's a scatter plot where birth rate is on the x-axis x -axis in the number of deaths, the cumulative number of deaths from heart disease are on the y-axis. Okay. Um, I know you're probably tempted to ask, what is that? <laughs> what does that data set hold? Um, Okay, and the data set for it on which it will depend will be called, can you imagine what it will be called? Birth rate versus cune of heart disease mortality data set. Do not use the number of computed iterations as the horizontal axis value. No, no, no. No. There are times we want to do that. We want to retain values. In fact, we did it upstairs. We did it above. We did it, we did it for, for this one. We we used that option. This oh, no, we used a histogram data, sorry. Um but this one, no. What we want in the x value is what? 
Each time we add a data point, what's the X value? Birth rate, what's the Y value? Compute, yeah, cumulative heart disease mortality. Okay, so what is this scatter plot going to draw on for its data? That data set, get it, the name of that data set and put it in there. Put it in there, Nona, put it in there, okay? You, you, you're gonna, you're gonna add the data set to that. Birth rate versus this. There we go. It's a thing of beauty, and we'll display up to a thousand data points. Sure. Um. Okay. And we're almost done. A parent could stop, draw a line. Um, uh, uh, draw a line, undo, draw a line on this thing. Thank you. You notice it clues you in by showing that there's lines here. Don't You don't want the lines. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be a graph of magnificence. May I introduce you to the graph of magnificence? Okay. Um, okay. And now the finale, the crescendo. We have to tell where to put the data in. And where are we going to, where are we going to find where to put the data into that? What data is going to go into it? Data from where? Whence, from when, whence will that data come? It's in the Java Actions. And where will we find that data? Speak on. Well, we're going to add to that data set in the Java Actions, UGF, UGF said it exactly. And we're going to add into that data set two values. What are the two values? Yeah, where do we find those values? In root, in root, right? We can ask, for the root, give me your what? For the first of them, give me your what? Main has a thing, a parameter, in fact, called what? Begins with a B. Birth rate. Birth rate. Hey, birth rate. And the other thing we're going to add into that scatter, so the other half of it, we're going to add, it's what? Cumulative, right? And we already know how to do that because we did it two lines above, did we not? Root dot count deaths with heart disease, right? Right? We did it two lines above. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna put this on the second line so you can see the the fundamental unity of them. Somehow the crowd is not going wild. Um okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is what we did before for the histogram. Remember that histogram? It showed a histogram, so Jarrett noted the sort of central limit aspect and so on. And, and we added the count deaths with heart disease to that histogram. That's what we were drawing in the histogram. Here, we're, oh, don't do root root. It's root count deaths with heart disease here. It's the second of the pair. The first of the pair is the parameter value. Why in the world would we read the parameter up? Because that's what we are varying in this sensitivity analysis. Hmm? Read that out and then add it into the data set. Add it into this data set for the scatter plot. Not for a histogram, but for a scatter plot. For the graph, no less of, of magnificence. Okay, and this data set needs to be able to hold a thousand samples. I'm tempted to say 10,000. Just, I think Wade's okay with that. Just don't put like a billion. And I think I'll do the same for this graph. Uh, would that be sage advice, Wade? Yeah, I, I use 10,000. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, it said root cannot be. I think I did root root. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Root. Okay. Root. Okay. 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 Root dot. So we're reading out from that model we ran the birth rate that we're assuming that we imposed on it, because that's what we're varying, the count deaths from heart disease that resulted from it, and we're adding it into our scatter plot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time which uh, for which you've been waiting, the graph of magnificence. There we go. And there we go. Is it linear? No. As we change the birth rate, as we change the birth rate, that's the x-axis, the cumulative number of deaths from heart disease, does it tend to rise or fall? rise, but as we go up by each step from 0.01 to 0.02, actually, these are separated by 0.05, but you don't have to figure out why it, it, it's not showing that last digit, the you could probably tell us, but, but um, as you go up by 0.05, the, the successive increments um, that we're doing, that we're putting into place here, okay. Uh, Wait, maybe you could help with the wires in one point. Of yeah. Um, maybe because it, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's two point oh ones. I think these two is probably something normal. Um, in any case, uh, it each success one here increases it, but then it starts increasing much more here. Why would the number of heart disease, cumulative heart disease, deaths, why would it go up with the birth rate? Because the population becomes larger, right? And so there are more deaths in absolute terms. There's nothing like too earth shattering. It would be a lot more interesting if we plotted out the fraction, and that's easily done. Very easily done with, with a population statistic. You can compute a fraction that a debtor of this. So you take the average over each person with the condition, where they're either zero if they don't have the condition, or one if they do, and you get the prevalence. Um, it's quite quite a nice little thing using the average statistic. Where zero if they don't have it, one if they do. If there's ten people without, or nine people without it, and one that with it, it'll be an average of zero 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 nine times, and then one, so it'll be point one. In any case, um, this shows that trend, and in general, you can use this for many, many cases. These graphs, these scatter plots, which are used with, which are used with parameter variations. And ladies and gentlemen, with that utterance, I will post this this model. This model now recommended by the ability to perform sensitivity analyses. Oh, I already posted version 14, so I'm going to call this version 15. I've, I've been sloppy in my exertions, as reflects my sleep battled condition. Okay, so I'm saving it, and here we go. Okay, there we go. It is posted. The fruits of our labor are shared with all of you. I thank you for your attention and your, your stalwart exertions. Okay. Um, I, I, I thereby finished my lecture and tutorial on incorporating stochastic sensitivity analysis and then in short succession.
parameter variation. I think we've done well. We've introduced broaden your knowledge on a wide variety of fun, fronts. And I therefore I rest satisfied. Okay. I do um we need to finish up momentarily or you know very quickly in the next half hour. No more than that. So I want to um make some remarks. First of all, I'm going to be posting some videos of areas uh, that I'd like you to be aware of, but where there are good video resources um, delivered, no less, from this podium. I will also post uh, some of these, um, uh, these slides for parameter variation experiment. Um, they talk, for example, about... Monte Carlo sensitivity analysis, where we could have drawn those values, not stepped them through with the birth rate, but drawn it from a distribution. All readily done, just like you draw values from other distributions, like a uniform distribution within the AnyLogic model itself. But I did want to note that um, beyond those, we have you know, a key topic, which I'm going to most recommend to you is calibration. And calibration, I, I think I'll stop the, the recording here and we'll, we'll, we'll start, start another just for my comments. Here we go. Stop.